Now, Sloan, just before COVID hit, you had sold out your first headlining tour, then boom, pandemic. How did you handle the disappointment? That must have just been devastating. Yeah, it was literally the first day of um, tour. We were driving from Austin to Chicago, and like we left Austin like normal tour, ready to go for the rest oh. of the year, pretty much. Um, so it was just weird. I mean, like nobody really knew what was going on at first. Um, so it kind of felt like, is this like, like what's happening, you know? Um, but it was crazy. It was weird. It was really frustrating at first. Um, but you know, it's a, it's an impossible thing to stay frustrated at cause it's affected everyone. So, um, I don't know. There's also been good that's come out of it. Cause I've had this time to like reflect on my, you know, life and trajectory and like what this is all about. So can you explain uh, it to us, the rest of us then? What is it all about, Sloan? <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. I mean, I guess the process of finding it out, it's not really, you know, getting the answer. Um, but yeah, I, I just like, yeah, I don't know. It's been a good year of reflection. And that's something I'm thankful for. You have a great attitude about it. And you have been busy during the pandemic while the rest of us were learning new hobbies and learning how to bake sourdough bread. You're working on a new album. Sure. <laughs> Harmony House drops May 21st. How did you manage to stay focused enough to write music, perform music, record music? I, I've had a hard time keeping my mind on any one thing. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's a really weird thing um, where like being a musician and making and producing my own music, like I still got to do what I love to do. So kind of like half of my career and what I would like to do is shut off. So it's weird to complain about because like I have this other half that I love to do. Um, so it felt kind of normal in that way where like, I just locked myself in a room. Um, but for Harmony House, um, most of it had been pretty much written, excluding one song called December, which I wrote in quarantine. Um, but everything else was written. It was just a matter of mixing, which is a lot more meticulous and less, um, creative, you know? So that was easy to do because I could just sit down and you know, put my hoodie on and for hours just tweak and mix. And for folks that don't know, Sloan Daglow, you are truly a one man operation. I mean, you you write the music, you perform it, you record it, you you, you mix it, you produce it. I mean, is it because you don't play well with others, Sloan? What's what's going on here? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up in a small town in Texas, and I just grew up assuming that like obviously the lead singer of every band is like mixing the music, you know, like I just didn't know. So um, I grew up assuming it was that way, kind of forced myself to do it. And then realized when I moved to Austin and kind of had the opportunity to play with other people, um, I was just really picky when it comes to um, making and recording music. Like I travel with a band um, who's awesome and they're all like my great friends. Um, but as far as recording and making music, it's a really personal process to me um, and the greatest way to get a message across is to know every part of it. Um, and so like I tried sometimes to like someone play something else. I just I don't know. I'm just, you know, picky about it. So, well, that's that's an awesome way to be. That's why everything you put out is just so perfect. I would say it's just so meticulously produced and you can just tell that it's just I mean, that that is a finished product. Well, thank you. So I just think it's so cool. I know you've been locking yourself in a room with your computer since you were like 10. That's when you first discovered GarageBand. And it's just so amazing to me that, that a 10 year old kid and then somebody in their teens can go in their bedroom and with nothing more than a laptop can produce pretty amazing sounding music. Yeah, it times have changed, um, or at least I've heard, you know, I kind of grew up like just thinking it was that way, but <laughs> Um, yeah, it's awesome. There's so many tools and um, it's easy to get access to making music. But, you know, the same way with anything, it's about how you use the tools you're given. Um, you know, there's, it's created a lot more noise than necessary, I think. You know, there's just like a lot of music being made that, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's crazy. I'm so thankful that I had these tools and I could release an album you know, independently. Yeah. Are you completely self-taught? Do you have any formal music education? Just YouTube. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Do you, do you read music? Do you write music? I can't read very well. Like I could probably transcribe something slowly. 
um, but not like classically reading music. Yeah. Like, I can understand um, like MIDI, which is kind of like a uh, a computer language of wow. music. Um, but as far as you know, like a uh, normal classical scale or something, um, I can't read music. Is that something you have any interest in? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I've tried to, um, but it's just something that takes a lot of time. It like completely rewires um, the way that I've been doing it. And so well, maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out like, you know, but I've, I've been learning a lot more um, piano like pieces and jazz. Well, what, what, this is a stupid interview, interview question, but what musicians inspire you? What do you, what do you listen to when you're not working on day glow projects? Yeah, well, that's kind of fun because I'm growing up. I'm 21 years old now, and um, I'm still like in my formative musical years. Um, and for me, I've been listening to a lot of like 70s and 80s pop music, like um, over quarantine. And I guess before, I've just like really fallen in love with like James Taylor and um, Paul Simon, Carpenters, um, you know, these just like giants um, that my generation just doesn't know about. So um, I've been going back and discovering it all, which has been really fun. Speaking of the Carpenters, uh, let's talk about the lead track from your new album. It's called Close to You, not the Carpenter song. It's an, it's something yeah. entirely, entirely <laughs> different. You shared the same, same name. And you said in an interview once that you wanted to channel a pop duet from the 80s for this track. Mm -hmm. so I'm curious, was it originally written to be a duet? Did you think someone else might perform with you? Kind of, yeah. Well, like I was talking about earlier, I'm just super picky about like anything. So I don't know what I was thinking, like like <laughs> thinking that I was going to work, you know. So I guess what fueled the song and really sparked the inspiration um, was I, I was listening to On My Own, Michael McDonald and Patti LaBelle, which is just oh, yeah, like a great song. power ballad. And I was thinking like, nobody does like like duets anymore like there's like collabs and features yeah. but where two people like come together and like use each one of their creative strengths and uh do a duet is really cool um and so i wanted to make something that sounded essentially like that song um which you know i i couldn't compare it to that but um it started off as the idea of like channeling that emotion of a duet and then I just never really found someone to do it um and then I guess just sang it with myself which <laughs> makes sense lyrically because the song kind of has like a self-reflective self-doubt kind of thing so it's kind of like you're singing with yourself I don't know that's so interesting I, I, I love you know I'm, I'm a musician I'm a saxophone player and I play bass and so when I hear a song I'm listening to the music more than I am the lyrics so to me all of your music is just so uplifting and happy. And I know sometimes lyrically that isn't always the case, sure. but your video, your videos are the same. You just look like you were having so much fun yeah. in all of your videos. Yeah, it's been a blast. Um, I love making videos and just having fun. Well, the Harmony House Tour comes to Portland in September, rolls in theater on September 23rd, and you mentioned you have a band backing you. I don't think I'd want to be in your band. I think I'd be very, very nervous that I was going to do something that you didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've learned to, um, you know, just like let them, like we, the way I kind of look at it is like, like it's a day glow cover band and I'm, I'm uh, part of it. You know, it's like uh, the recording exists and like it's its own thing. And then there's also like a completely other version of Day Glow, and we're all a part of it. Um, so when you sing close to you on tour, are you, do you have like your own vocals backing you or does somebody uh, else sing with you? Yeah. So my bassist, Peyton, and um, the guy who plays keys, his name is Nori, and both of them like sing um, with the backing tracks. So it's like a half and half, you know, because it's like a group vocal. So they're gotcha. part of the group, but. So before I let you go, you're in Austin, Texas now, right? Yes. Are you a carnivore? I am. Wait. What's the, I think, what's the best yeah. barbecue in Austin? Best barbecue in Austin. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, Franklin's is kind of obvious. That, that's the one I know of, yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah, there's a place by my house um, called Metcalf, which is really good. I don't know if it's Austin specific. Um and that's really good. And then what's the one? Blacks? I think Blacks Barbecue. So I know you guys take it very seriously. 
by Zilker or something. So um, there's good barbecue anywhere. <laughs> All right. Take care. So glad you joined me, Sloan. Best yeah. to you. And I will be at that show in September uh, awesome. here in Portland. So I can't wait to see you live. Yeah, well, I'll see you then. That's going to be fun. All right. Bring me some barbecue. Yes, will do. <laughs> <laughs> take care, Sloan. Thanks. All right. Thank you. See ya.